How is a house built? How does that work? We accompanied the complete construction of a typical German single-family home for more than six months. We were involved in every important step. From the first floor work to the finished house. In the first part, the earthworks were carried out and the floor slab was cast. Now the masonry work continues. The floor slab has hardened and the bricks are already there. Now it can start with the masonry. The first step, lay bitumen membrane. It protects the walls from rising damp. For the first row of bricks, a cement mortar has to be mixed, which later becomes as hard as concrete. It serves as an underfill to compensate for differences in height of the base plate because the stones must all be at exactly the same level. It starts at the corners. A laser checks whether the height is correct. If the first stone sits and is exactly in balance, the next ones are aligned with it. In the other corners it happens the same way. Of course, all dimensions for wall openings, for example for windows and doors, must also be observed. The masons have the floor plan for this. Here on the south side of the house there is already the first special feature, three floor to ceiling windows. The row of bricks must therefore be interrupted here. Just like on the front for the front door. The first row is slowly taking shape. The masons work their way from the corners and put stone by stone. But what kind of stone is that exactly, which is installed here? We do not work with the external wall insulation system, which is widespread here. Instead, our houses use a so-called Puritan stone, so that's a stone made of clay, in which the thermal insulation is integrated in the stone. With hydrophobic mineral wool. So a solid stone, 36.5 cm thick, with hydrophobic mineral wool as insulation. That means, best sound insulation and best building physical properties and also the best thermal insulation. The bricklayers have made the first course and are already on the second row. So-called thin bed mortar now ensures the non-positive connection between the rows of stones. Ideal for energy efficient building. High load capacity with a very small joint thickness of approximately 1 mm. The second row is quickly laid. A barrier film against rising damp comes over it again. The two lower rows of stones form the base of the house, which will later be clad. The walls are now protruding over the base. The masons are making good progress thanks to the large-scale bricks. But instead of laying row after row now, they first concentrate on the corners of the outer walls. Forming the corners has the advantage that you can easily lay out the plumb lines for the next rows of tiles. The first working day is done. The next morning they continue with the outer walls. The bricklayers place row after row. The windows and lintels are installed. 
and around noon the bricklayers arrived at the last row on the ground floor. Finally, the pink styrofoam formwork is laid for the concrete ceiling. The formwork also serves as insulation and remains on the building after finishing the ceiling. At the end of the second working day, the outer walls of the ground floor are ready. Day 3. Today the interior walls are created. Here too, a bitumen membrane is placed under the walls to protect against rising damp. The stones are so-called vertical perforated bricks in two different versions. For comparison, here both on top of each other. The brick with 17.5 cm wall thickness for the load-bearing walls and the narrower brick with 11.5 cm for the non-load-bearing walls. The floor plan shows where which stone has to be used. The load-bearing walls run right through the house, between the living room, guest room, kitchen, and the utility room, and once along to the load-bearing living room wall, and the non-load-bearing walls run between the kitchen, living room, bathroom and the utility room. The walls are set up here just like the outer walls. Cement mortar under the first row, exact leveling of the first stones with laser, from the second row on, thin bed mortar, laser, spirit level, plumb line and constant checking ensure exact, straight walls. Finished. The inner walls are standing. Now the base gets a diffusion open seal before the cladding is coming. Day 4. The scaffolding comes. The base is clad and the masons set up pillars throughout the house to support the ceiling elements. The next morning, exactly at 8 am, the crane stands for the ceiling elements. The ceiling elements, so-called semi-finished part ceilings are approximately 6 cm thick reinforced concrete slabs, in which part of the necessary reinforcement has already been inserted. They can be laid quickly and flexibly, depending on the size, but then still need to be concreted. For this, the masons insert additional reinforcement bars. Firstly, to optimally connect and consolidate the ceiling with the masonry. Secondly, to join the individual ceiling elements together. This creates a stable, closed concrete ceiling after concreting. Only the access to the stairs remains free and has to be boarded accordingly. Once all the reinforcement bars have been laid, everything is connected with wire so that nothing moves during concrete pouring. The ceiling openings for the supply lines, water, heating, electricity which comes to the upper floor also remain free, they get polystyrene covers before concreting. Finished. The concrete for the ceiling can come. A total of approximately 12 cubic meters of concrete flow into the formwork for the approximately 10 by 10 meters ceiling slab. It is important to evenly distribute and prevent air pockets. Therefore constantly push the concrete back and forth, so that the air can escape. The height must of course also be correct and is constantly checked with the laser. Done. Now the concrete is compacted with a surface vibrator. The surface vibrator directs high frequency vibrations into the concrete. This increases the flowability of the fresh concrete, air pockets rise to the surface and can escape. 
This gives the concrete its perfect, dense consistency. Finished. Now the concrete ceiling has to harden. A few days later, the bricklayers start with the upper floor. The construction is the same as on the ground floor. The outer walls are created again with the thermal brick made of Poritan stone with hydrophobized mineral wool. First the corners are created again, then the entire outer walls. However, there are no longer any load-bearing walls inside. All partitions for the master bedroom, dressing room, bathroom, children's room and corridor are built with the narrower, vertically perforated brick with a wall thickness of 11.5 cm. After four days, the upper floor is also up. As a conclusion, only the anchor ring plate is missing. For this, the bricklayers have already put a formwork on the top row of bricks, into which reinforcement bars are now being laid. The anchor ring, as the name suggests, runs like a ring around the entire top edge of masonry. This reinforced concrete construction gives the wall stability. The anchor ring plate is used to absorb and transfer horizontal tensile forces such as wind, ground vibrations and the roof load itself. If the concrete is filled, it must be compacted again with the surface vibrator. The masonry work is now complete. The walls of the house stand. Construction time for the two floors, 10 days.